Good morning. Thank you for visiting this video of St. Luke United Church of Christ in Beecher, Illinois. I'm Tom Ewing, the pastor here. This video contains the Focus Scripture lesson and the message that will be delivered later this morning at 1015 in the sanctuary located at 725 Penfield Street. We hope you can join us in person later this morning, but if not, thank you for spending this time with us on the internet. The Focus Scripture lesson this morning is from John chapter 12, verses 20 to, 30, 20, 20 to 36. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, then and Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life will lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of the world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out, and I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The crowd answered him, We have heard from the law that the Messiah remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is the Son of Man? And Jesus said to them, The light is with you for a little longer. Walk while you have the light so that the darkness may not overtake you. If you walk in the darkness, you do not know where you are going. While you have the light, believe in the light, so that you may become children of light. After Jesus said this, he departed and hid from them. It was a once-in-a-lifetime vacation for Robert Daly. He and his wife were driving through parts of Europe. While in France, they stopped in the village of Colombay. The little town of about 350 people has gray stone homes lining the street with a gray stone church in the center. The town itself is indistinguishable from many other French villages. Something in the village caught the Daly's attention that day, however. They noticed the church cemetery was filled with people. It was so crowded that there were police officers directing traffic. The Daly's assumed that some local dignitary had just died and all of his neighbors had turned out for the funeral. This was not the case, however. No one had died from that village for some time, they were told. In fact, the people crowding that old church cemetery weren't neighbors at all. They were tourists. They were searching for the grave of Charles de Gaulle. Evidently, people were having great difficulty locating the grave of the late general. Flowers, wreaths, and other markings are not permitted in the church cemetery. There was a large monument which may, many tourists assumed was the grave that they were searching for, but it was not. <clears throat> De Gaulle's grave is off to the side amid many others. There's nothing fancy about the gravestone either. It's just a white marble stone, nothing fancy at all. We've all experienced what it's like to be tourists. Milton Kleinman has compiled a list of what he calls vacation vexations or words we wished we'd never heard. Let me read a few of them. I found them amusing. Sure, we'll take the dog alone. How much trouble can it be? The car needs a tune-up, but we can get one once we're on the road. They cost about the same everywhere. The heck with reservations. We're sure to find a place. I know we only have a quarter of a tank of gas, but there's bound to be one or two stations along the shortcut. The suntan lotion is up in our room. Another half hour won't hurt. Ah, oh, come on. A little French place like this couldn't be too expensive. We'll get that flat fixed where we stop for the night. I never heard of two tires going bad in one day. <laughs> ah, the joys of being a tourist. Well, some Greeks were visiting Jerusalem. 
They were tourists there to see the sights of the famous city. It was the time of the Passover festival, and the streets were swarming with people. While there, they heard about a local celebrity who was making quite a name for himself. It was said that he raised a man from the dead, a man named Lazarus. These Greek tourists were intrigued. They sought out one of the itinerant teacher's disciple, a man named Philip. Since Philip was a Greek name, they thought he might help them meet the, his celebrity teacher. And they spoke plainly to Philip, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. This presented quite a problem for, for Philip. Until this moment, Jesus' ministry had been exclusively directed to the Jews. Philip was unsure what to do, so he found Andrew and together they went to find Jesus. When they found him, they told him that some Greeks wanted to meet him. They knew from experience Jesus considered no one a nuisance. Certainly, Jesus would want to meet people who traveled such a great distance. Jesus, however, surprised them. He didn't say a word about going to meet these visitors. Instead, he viewed this incident as a sign. Jesus said to, his, to the two disciples, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. We don't know whether Jesus ever met with the Greeks or not. Philip probably felt silly. He left those visitors on a street corner waiting. And here was the master speaking these mysterious words. The hour is come. This was obviously a sign Jesus had been waiting for. The time would come when all people would look to him as Lord and Savior. These Greeks were just the first people from every race and nation who would one day call on his name. Jesus is Lord of all. That's where we begin this morning. Jesus is Lord of all. The rich, the Jew and Gentile, rich person and poor, righteous and unrighteous. No one is excluded. All of us are equal in his sight. Excuse me. <clears throat> Linda was a homeless cocaine addict. She was experiencing serious, serious health problems, including a heart attack from her addiction. Linda was in a panic, not knowing what would happen to her and her young son. She was at the lowest point of her life. And one Sunday morning, she wandered into a nearby church and sat in the last pew. Persons around her could not help to notice that she was crying throughout the service. That morning, Linda heard the good news about Christ's love and forgiveness and how to make a new start in life. Linda returned the next Sunday and the Sunday after that but she was reluctant to fill out the visitor's registration card. The more she came to church, the more she began to feel the love of those sitting near her. One Sunday, she filled out the visitor's card, checking that she needed help. The church had a program of lay visitation. That week, she was visited by two members of the church. One of the team that went to see Linda was Fred. He had the gift of hope as well as profound love. Fred knew that Jesus Christ could help Linda. He told her that Jesus could bring healing in her life. He explained how she could meet Jesus. And then he waited patiently until she committed her life to Christ and asked for his healing of her addiction. Several months later, Linda radiated with joy as she shared her victory over addiction to cocaine. I want to share what I found, she said with enthusiasm. I want to work with young people hooked on hard drugs. I want them to know there's hope. Linda now works with teenagers who are addicted and need Christ's love and hope. In some churches, Linda might not even have been welcome. How sad it is when people build fences around the gospel. Jesus is Lord of all. Some Greeks wanted to see Jesus. These Greeks were a preview of what was to come. The day when all people would look to Jesus as their Savior and Lord. Jesus is Lord of all. We need to know, however, that there is a cost to being one of his followers. Remember Gracie Allen, who played the scatterbrained wife in a comedy team with her husband, George Burns? Once Gracie called in a repairman to fix her electric clock. The repairman fiddled it with for a while and then said, there's nothing wrong with the clock. You didn't have it plugged in. And Gracie replied, I don't want to waste electricity. So I only want to plug it in when I want to know what time it is. <laughs> That's an apt description of many of us. We save our religion for a rainy day. We go about unplugged and wonder why our lives are so devoid of power. 
How sad. Christian faith is not something to be plugged in when it's convenient or when it's necessary. The Christian life is lived daily. There is a cost involved. Jesus said, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. This is the paradox of our Christian faith. It is only by losing ourselves that we find new life. It is in bearing our selfish aims and ambition that we are of real use to God. That's what Jesus wanted his followers to understand. The grain that must fall to the earth was himself, but it is also each of us. Only as we lose our lives do we find them. Those who love their life will lose it, said Jesus, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. A New England school teacher took early retirement because of health problems. One day she was visited by a divinity student who asked her for help. He told her he felt inadequate for the task before him. The task was visiting women who were prisoners in jail. The retired school teacher, Dorothea Dix, agreed to help. While visiting these women prisoners, she saw things she did not know existed. All the women were mixed together. There were those who were insane and those who were murderers, living right alongside those guilty of only misdemeanors. Dorothea Dix dedicated the rest of her life to helping these women. For over 40 years, despite her poor health and weak body, she labored for others, giving of herself. When she died, she left 30 mental hospitals as monuments to her sense of responsibility for people whom the rest of society looked down upon. Jesus is Lord of all, but there's a cost to following him. Fortunately, the gain is worth the pain. The time was fast approaching when Jesus would be put to death on the cross. He spoke once again to his disciples about his, his pending death. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. That's a great statement of faith, isn't it? It is for this reason that I've come to this hour. Do you have that feeling about your life? Do you believe you are where God means for you to be and you're doing what God means for you to do? E. Stanley Jones truly believed that Jesus is Lord and lived his life accordingly. His positive faith affected every aspect of his life, including his health. He led retreats into his late 70s. He could outwalk someone half his age. Dr. Jones believed that positive attitudes enhance physical healing. He certainly proved this when he suffered a crippling stroke at age 89. It was tough going for several months. Though paralysis, pers paralysis persisted, his positive attitude remained rooted in his unsha unshakable trust in Jesus Christ. He prayed and asked people around the world to pray that he would walk again. An around-the-clock prayer vigil was scheduled. When he awakened from sleep, either day or night, he insisted that the attending nurse repeat this affirmation. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise and walk. During his five-month stay in a Boston hospital, Dr. Jones used a tape recorder to chart the progress of his returning speech. During this time, he began to dictate a book that was titled The Divine Yes. He was taken to the Himalayas in India for further recuperation, and finally he was able to walk again and even resume preaching. Dr. Jones continued living and preaching victoriously until he moved from the earthly life to the heavenly dimension of life. Jesus is Lord of all. You and I have the same resources at our disposal as E. Stanley Jones. We can experience the living Christ at work in our lives. And I, Jesus said, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. That includes you and me. All are invited to, unto the throne of grace, whether you are a devout Jew or, or simply a Greek tourist visiting for a spell. There is a cost to following Christ, but I can assure you the gain is worth the pain. He offers life and peace and love to everyone who would come to him. Until we meet again, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. Amen.